ծուցյան եւ ծանր բահերին քեզեմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as you are watching today's show, as you've turned on your TV and you're watching it, you know where I'm at? Well, you want to say that I'm right in front of you. Actually, I'm crossing the finish line at the Avon Walk for Breast Cancer. And this is a 2-day walk. 39.3 miles we're going to be walking in the town of Santa Barbara and right about right now I should be crossing the finish line along with hundreds of other people collecting money in the tune of about 5 million dollars to aid breast cancer research and put an end to this ugly disease and you say well we tuned into a show called Armenian Christianity today What does that have to do with us as Armenian Christians? Well, actually it has a lot to do with it. Because as I walk through this through this walk, as I go through these steps, I contemplate not only my place as a person as an individual, but especially as a priest. Because as a priest, we are called to be the ministers of the gospel. We are called to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. The basic truth of Christ is that he came to heal whether that is an individual suffering from grave diseases or whether that is our planet our a hum, collective humanity or yes why not even the planet suffering from all kinds of difficulties right now So I want to talk to you about a few different things starting off with this issue of cancer breast cancer research and then continue on to where a, a, a conversation that has all of us thinking today and rather scared about the war the possibility of war in Syria. So let's begin with this walk. I walk in in uh, Santa Barbara 39.3 miles along with hundreds of people and we raise money. You know There is a very beautiful saying and I want you to remember that today. It is easier to light a candle than it is to curse the darkness. And whether it is easier or not, it is certainly better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Let's begin with that. If you look at your life today, it is so easy to look at the difficulties the bad things that are taking place. I've shared this with you in the past. You turn on the news at night and what is it? It is a succession of bad news after bad news after bad news. In fact, today they will report on your local newscast. They will report about the one accident that took place on the freeway. They won't tell you that millions of people made it home safe and sound because that is not news. Now we are getting bombarded by this negative news all the time and this causes a lot of times depression in people people start going down like they say wow what am i supposed to do there's so many difficulties in the world and then when disease comes into your life you say that wow how can i this is overwhelming what can i do as an individual we go back when you walk into an armenian church what's the first thing that you notice the row of candles jesus said I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, there cannot be darkness. It's very easy to look at the darkness in life. It is very easy to look at the negativity in life. What you need to be as an Armenian Christian today is that candle, that one bright light. To say that it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness means exactly that. You are the living sacrifice. You light the candle. Your life becomes that candle. And then the darkness is not around. This is why Jesus says so clearly, he says, "I am in you and you are in me. You are my followers, and because I am your leader, I am within you." Well, if Christ is within us, what do we have to do but to radiate that light? And so when we have these ultimate diseases these large diseases it's very easy to curse those diseases to say look how awful cancer is and it certainly is as a priest I've seen it destroy families destroy life 
But as an individual, I look at that and I realize, as Christ tells us, we have to be the candle. Light that candle. And so we walk. We walk. We raise money. We become part of the solution. It's very easy to talk about the negativity. How about being part of the solution so then we could talk about the positive side. And so we see people coming together. We see people walking. We see people collecting money. And we see the work of God taking place. Now this is about disease. But you know what? The earth, the planet, humanity is being plagued by disease. Humanity, we could say, because of war. We could say the planet itself because of the consequences of war. In other words, our, willing, our unwillingness to take charge and responsibility for the things that are ours. We have destroyed. The ecological movement is something seldom you hear about, but it is certainly creeping up on us when you look at what's going on in the different patterns of weather and circumstances. And guess what? Who do we have to blame but ourselves? We are inhabitants of this, this planet. We use oil, we use the riches, we use the abundance of the planet without paying attention to the consequences. So we have uh, the ability to create nuclear energy and then we have to think about how do we dispose of the nuclear waste. Well, that is of course about the planet, but how about us, let's start off as us, as inhabitants of the planet. And certainly today, most of us, are our, our minds are occupied with this hateful news that possibly, possibly in Syria, we may be sending in troops. Well, let's look at that as a Christian. Let's look at that as an Armenian Christian today. Of course, war is unacceptable. Jesus said, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Now this is an axiom. In other words, this is a truth. Jesus is not saying, well, if you pick up a sword, then somebody's going to kill you. No, he's saying this as a, as, a, as a truth. Like just as you know, one plus one equals two. If you pick up a sword, that's the way people, that's the way you're going to die. And certainly we know this is true. Somebody bothers you, what do you do? You find somebody who could bother them even more. Somebody raises their hand to you, you find a hand that's even bigger. Somebody kills you, you find a weapon that is even bigger. And so it escalates and it becomes war. It is time for us to break these patterns. Jesus says, fight evil with love. Now as a Christian, you can laugh at that, but then you're not a Christian, are you? Because as a Christian, you're called to believe and accept the totality of what Christ taught us. He taught us that there is a weapon that you have that is greater than all the evil. You have a weapon in your heart, in your being, in your soul that is more powerful than all the guns. And that is the weapon of love. Now you can either believe this like I said, or you can laugh at it and mock it, but you certainly can't take claims as a Christian because a Christian has to believe what Christ said. So I choose to believe that. I believe that there is a power that we have that we have not yet exploited. We haven't even come close to trying it. Certainly we've tried fighting evil with evil and we see what happens. We see it over and over in country and country. Somebody said, how do you fight fire? The other person said, you fight fire with fire. I'm sure you've heard that expression. You fight fire with fire. No, you don't. You fight fire with water. <laughs> You've got to fight evil with something that can overcome evil. Jesus did that, didn't he? The entire evil of the world came together on, at that cross. Here was a person who came into this world and brought love, compassion. And in its place, he was given the death sentence on the cross. And yet he didn't fight. He could have sent his legion of angels and wiped out the entire earth. He didn't do that. What did he say? Father, forgive them. He combated evil with love. You know how powerful that is? It's a power that many leaders have tapped into. Leaders who have not picked up weapons. Most famously last week we celebrated, we remembered, we commemorated 
the March on Washington by civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King. Before he was known as Dr. King, he had a reverend on his, on his title. Why? Because there's a reverend of Jesus Christ, a reverend of the gospel, a minister of the gospel, and he knew the power that Christ had put inside of him. And so when he went to Washington and he uttered those words that today ring in our, in, in our ears, I have a dream. It was a dream to bring about peace through nonviolence, through finding justice. And you and I can become those ambassadors of peace. As people are rattling their swords and saying that we need war, we as Armenian Christians should be standing up and saying that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us a greater weapon. And that is a, a weapon that, is, that has not yet been tried. It is the weapon of love. Let us reach out to one another. Let us try to find understanding. Let us try to exhaust the possibilities that we haven't exhausted. It's very easy to go into another country and bomb them. It's the easiest thing these days. What is more difficult and the challenge for us is to stand up and say that I am that candle of light. I want to light up this darkness. And so you see that we come to this one simple point, whether it is combating diseases such as cancer, whether it is the global situation of the planet, or it is the situation of humanity. It all begins with us. Us taking responsibility for our lives. Accepting that God has created us in His image. That you and I, and that means, yes, you and I, whoever those yous are out there, whoever the eyes are out here, in other words, all of humanity has been created in His image. Our only salvation is to take the words of Christ and reach out to one another with love, with compassion, to take that compassion and sincerity, to make it a sacrifice of our lives and bring it together in a synthesis and a harmony that brings together everybody. And we can do that. We can become that light in the world. Jesus, in fact, begins his statement by saying, I am the light of the world, but what does he say? He ends it up and in telling us, he says, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. So too, let your light shine in across the world so that people can see it and give praise to your heavenly Father. What is that praise? The praise that he looks for. The praise that says, we are his children, we are extending ourselves to one another. We live in peace, in harmony, and in love. Let's become those agents. Let's become those candles. Instead of cursing the darkness, let us light our own candles. I look forward to continuing this discussion with you next week. Until that time, I always remind you to give praise and glory to the one who gives us the light, to the Father, the Son, to the Holy Spirit.